the most worrying chart pattern that everyone was losing their mind over on Twitter and YouTube. All of these amateur traders going on about a head and shoulders pattern. Now, do we even see a head and shoulders pattern on Bitcoin? And the most important thing, what damn time frame were you looking at? What time frame were these influencers, creators looking at? Now we can see it on a four hour chart. We can see it on a one hour chart. But what effect is that going to have on the market long term? It's only a damn one hour chart for F sake people. Anyway, everyone's losing their mind over this thing. Looks like we have avoided the head and shoulders. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, here is a shoulder, here is a head. And they were talking about this being another shoulder. Now, we could come out and have a double shoulder. That's something that they haven't talked about. But for now, it looks like we have broken the curse of the head and shoulders. This would be the neckline through here to around 30,000. And we could see a fall down to the next support levels. That's what we're going to have a look at today. Plus, I want to go into the areas that I'll be buying Bitcoin, whether it's a fall, whether it's a rise and basically support and resistance levels, which are safer pickings. So if you're new to the channel, thank you for joining us once again. Well, if you're new, this might be your first time. Hit me in the subscribes down below and notify yourself for more videos by hitting the bell and all. YouTube has a way of shadow banning cryptocurrency content at the most important times. And yeah, if you do find value, let me know, hit the likes and comment down below with any of your questions. Let's move on with today's video. Bitcoin looks like an awful pattern up there if we know anything about head and shoulders. So the main thing I want to have a look at is just reflecting on everything that we've covered up to this point on the channel and looking at a macro view of the markets. If you're following the minute chart, which I know you do, I see you there in the live streams. I see you there in the comments. When should I buy? If you're following the minute chart, the five minute, the 15 minute, the 30 minute, even the hour, you are wasting your time. It's not that time just yet. We don't need to be following the micro mini, mini micro charts. It's not important. We need to stick to our big guns. We need to stick to at the very minimum, the daily. All right. I even like three days just to clear out some of the noise. And all I'm doing here is looking for trends and support and resistance lines. That's it. A weekly chart is the best at this point. And this is how we stayed in throughout the bear market of 2019 and 2020. And we were buying in between these levels of 5,000 to 12,000 and a little more on the 16 as we had the dip. But the primary area that we wanted to buy was through here. And if you've been following the channel, you know that's what we were doing because we had identified key levels of support and key levels of resistance, which flipped our view to super bullish. The main one being the 10,000, 10 and a half thousand dollar area, which was the triple top. Here's a top, here's another top and another top. We broke through it on high volume. So always pay attention to the volume. The volume is massive. I have it on a weekly chart. I'm not screwing around with the minute, the five minute, the 15 minute. This is the important stuff. So we know from that that these were the levels that I was buying because of the reason being that the market broke through very, very strong resistance. So that's what I'm going to look for moving forward. Right now, we don't have any price data above us. There's nothing out there. You probably won't find people using Fibonacci tools as an extension in the market. And all I'm doing here is a first range out and then projecting that from a swing low, a significant swing low. And that's going to give us some price targets moving forward. Now, there is no data further up. However, these are price areas uh, of support and resistance, which have been identified by Fibonacci level sequence. These are naturally occurring numbers in nature and they don't have to hit the price exactly. They can push through them and come back, but you should see some price action around those numbers. So let's take a look at that. So let's take off the volume. We're just using the Fib extension tool here on the side, trend-based Fib extension. If you want to know what the software is, I have a link in the description. It's tradingview.com. Get the software out yourself. You can use a free version. I prefer the paid version because it gets rid of all the ads. You do you. So I'm using this range here. This is a major low to a major top. And this is the last recent major low after this swing top, but below it. 
All right, so it's looking like an ABC swing trade. This is essentially swing trading. And as we move up the areas of support and resistance, all of these numbers have been broken down by this range here. So this total range projected here. So the first we could see that 100% was coming out at 18 and a half thousand. And of course we had a double top there with the old all time high at around 19 and a half thousand to 20. So naturally there was going to be some resistance there. And it just proved that this range is going to be significant moving forward. Other areas to look for are the 161%, 261%, 361%. The reason being is that 61% is a very significant number throughout nature and of course we're going to use it in our FIB tool. And so the 100, the 200, the 300 is this range projected 100%, 200%, 300% but we want to look at it as an extension because we believe the market is extending further than what we have currently seen, which means it's on a bullish trend, which means there's a lot of strength in the market if we see extending further than the initial range here from March through to August. So 161%, we came out and we got a little rejection back in mid to late December around our seasonal dates, which we've talked about at around 24,000. Now, this burst through it, but it was a quick stopping point which showed that the market was extra strong. And we can now see from history that it just pushed on a hell of a lot further. 261% didn't show too much of a rejection, but now 361% definitely has shown a rejection at around the 41K. Sure, we saw it blow to 42,000, and now we are finding support at the 32,000. So it's just come back, we've found our support. Now moving forward, the first area would be if we break this top, it considerably, but it needs to confirm above there by closing on the weekly, at least for one week. That's a very conservative entry. So take that for what you want, not financial advice. Now, if I needed to get into Bitcoin anymore, I have a position large enough in these lower areas. But if, if this was the first time I was getting in, I could be buying it at the, the drops, but we don't know whether the market is going to continue falling. So the next time that there is a safe entry is a break of a swing. Currently, the swing top is at the all time high at 42,000. There's resistance at 361%. So that's the 41,000. And if we see it close above, we're pretty safe that we're going to go further. Overall, I think we're going to see a one to three month hold at this level. I think we're going to see some time before the market starts to really push up strong. We may climb up slowly, we may touch some of these levels up here, but I don't think it's going to be very confirming and long lasting if we break above this too early. So that's what I've said all along. You can go back and check out the videos on the channel. Uh, plenty of Bitcoin price prediction videos that I've got coming up and that have already been on the channel to show this. So that's my first level. Next level is if we get start to get a breakdown. So let's move down to a one day chart from this point and have a look at what we've got. So the swing bottom at the moment is at around that 30,200. The next swing bottom is at 27,700. So that is a nice area that I could see some more support coming in. Throwing the volume back on, it's going to be a tough ask to break down through that 30,000 level, but I'm still not concerned if the market does break down and head towards our targets, which are these orange dotted lines, which are my alerts at around 25,000, 29,000 or even a little further down at these old highs of 24 to 25,000. So all of these levels below are bullish entries for me. I'm not concerned that the market is rolling over at this point. I don't think it's time yet, but I definitely think there's time for this pullback to continue on. I think we should at least stay down here for another few weeks to maybe a few months. And like I've covered already, that's based on previous history that we saw through the bull market of 2017. So taking a step back in time just quickly again, the first range out, we shot up to $2,900, nearly 3000 And using the tool on the side from the top until it broke out again was 54 days. So two and a half, nearly three months. Now, if we are actually at this point in time where we've just been shooting up for quite a long time, the the time that the market took to get back above was 40 days. So you can see these start to shorten as the bull market matures. So 54 days down to 40 days. Let's have a look at the next one, which was here's a top bottom and then it broke through again, which only took 
eight days, let's say 17 days, just because we had uh, another push above and then a pull back. So we could say between eight and 17 days. Now we're getting towards the end, the, the very close end to the bull market, but the price appreciation was massive, was still quite massive, 8,000 to nearly 20,000. We only had two days here. We had one, two days, three days, and then four days until it broke its high. We had another two days down, third day it broke its high. So you can see the issue if we don't get enough time in these lower areas to build up some more speed, some more energy, some more power, we could be seeing this top. That's gonna to be a signal for me. If we only see two and four day pullbacks, between two and four day pullbacks, that is going to be very concerning that we could see a much, much, much bigger pullback. Another thing that's different to what we're seeing now is we see a swing low here at 12,700, another swing low at 15 and a half thousand. And before the market could have a reversal, so these were all down days, down, 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 down. And before it broke the tops, it already crushed one, two swing days. So two daily swings. This is very important to note because this was the end of the bull market. And there was one, two, three, four, five, almost you could call that six, seven, eight days down, no highs broken, and then it broke. So there was a very large time heading down. Very different to what we're seeing now, which is why I'm not concerned. And we've only seen one, two, three, maybe four days down. It's an inside day before we got the break. And we didn't see a daily break of the daily swing low. This is all positive moving forward. So this is the first target moving forward. If I see more than four days down from here, I might start to get a little bit angsty. So we start to move up again. So say this happens, it's heading towards 100,000. We're moving up, moving up, moving up, moving up. And then we see five days down and potentially there was a swing in here and it breaks that swing bottom. That's a huge signal to say something is up. Maybe the trend is changing at this point. Let's see how the market reacts. If it can only get just beneath the high and then start to pull back, show's over. That's a lower swing top. Very, very, very bearish time to get out. So that's pretty much where I'm sitting with Bitcoin at this point. Still bullish. We haven't seen any major bearish signals yet. Big entries to buy that were down at that 30,000. If we happen to pull back a little more, say to around 34, 35, could be another good entry. I would love to see this market play out underneath the old all-time high for a good few weeks to a few months. Just the longer we're down here, the better it's going to be for the next part of the bull market. So definitely want to see that. Don't worry. I think there's going to be time, not financial advice. So there my buy entry signals and the price targets that I'd be looking for. Moving forward from this point, we've gone through the head and shoulders. Forget the nonsense that people are raving on about when it comes to charts. If they don't do charts on an ongoing basis, they probably are just spouting something else off Twitter that they've seen and it's a nice scary title. So if you enjoy those scary titles, let me know. They definitely help out the SEO on the videos and get more people to see this content so they don't get screwed out of their positions and sell on these lows and buy again on the tops and sell on the lows. That's why I love doing those SEO type thumbnails. Anyway. Uh, we've gone through the head and shoulders. And from this point, I think we're pretty set with Bitcoin. Let's continue to follow it. If you found some value from the video, hit me in the likes, the comments, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get us to 50,000 subs. That sounds amazing. Let's get there and continue following this cryptocurrency bull market throughout 2021. Before I go, you guys that are asking about the course, it is coming out this month. If you want to get on the list for the first 100 guys to get on the course, guys or girls, of course, then drop your email address on my website. There's a link in the description down below. I've got a very big discount for the first 100 guys that want to jump on to the course. We'll also have a membership area with that as well. And it's going to be absolutely amazing for investing moving forward, building those portfolios. We're not here for the quick pump and dumps or the quick cash. This is long-term stuff. Check it out in the description. Until next time, have more fun to get more done.